I just recognized that, you know, he was paying more attention. Ben's super sense amazed everyone, but this was just the beginning. When he was seven, Ben discovered a new power. He began to click. For a couple of years, it was just a habit. And then next thing you know, it was making things more distinguished for me. I was able to navigate easier and know what things are. Ben learned to bounce his clicks off objects around him, giving him an even clearer picture of his surroundings. <laughs> when he was very young, I used to always tell him, Ben, make your sound. Even when you're running and playing, don't forget to make your sound. That's his survival technique. Over the years, Ben has developed his clicking into such a fine art that he can skate freely. He has the confidence and fluidity of movement through space other blind people can only dream of. Ben can see this gap in the parked cars, turn into it, and go through without touching the sides, then smoothly turn again along the pavement. He is entirely self-taught. Looking at the skills that he's developed with his own mind, I mean, that's got to be really amazing. Somewhere in there, it's a little genius going on. Ben's super sense has extended his horizons. Clicking has set him free to live life to the full. There's nothing his friends do that Ben won't attempt and conquer. Oh yeah, that's, that's the same, get beat by a blind man in, in a video game. Everyone who meets Ben just can't believe their eyes. Guess what you had for lunch, okay? Dr. James Rubin, Ben's eye doctor, has treated many blind children, but Ben was way outside even his experience. One day I came into the exam room and there was a boy feverishly playing his Game Boy. He looked at me like, Chipping out, like, is he really playing this? I looked at him and I looked at the chart and I said, this can't be the same boy that had lost both his eyes when he was a child. It just can't be possible. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, he's blind. He said, well, how is he playing the video game? From that point on, I was just flabbergasted. <laughs> ah! Dr. Rubin was so astonished, he told the local press. Soon, Ben was swimming with dolphins for a photo feature in People magazine. Then TV news features launched him onto the Oprah Winfrey show. Like Ben, dolphins echolocate with clicks. They also have highly evolved hearing. The question is, have Ben's ears become super sensitive to compensate for the loss of his eyes? Pie. Pie. He. He. Smooth. Smooth. Book. <laughs> Book. <laughs> ben is having a hearing test. Does he have the hearing of a dolphin or bat, picking up frequencies above or below the normal human threshold? Normal hearing is from 25 decibel and above. And as you can see, Ben has normal hearing in both his right and his left ear. Ben's ears are not super sensitive. So how does he get so much information from them? Can Ben have trained his brain to translate the sound he hears into visual information? Some of the best listeners in the world are to be found in San Diego in Southern California. At the US Navy submarine base, sonar operators learn their craft. Now, snapping shrimp? Snapping shrimp sounds like bacon frying in a frying pan. Whales sound like whale sound and you have boing fish, they sound like boing. On the surface, a submarine has many ways to see where it is. Radio, radar, GPS, and sight. Once submerged, these are all useless. The captain and the crew are blind, but they can still hear. Like Ben, a submarine crew sees with sound using sonar. Sonar is a, an acronym that stands for sound navigation and ranging. And it's basically the, the art and the science of using sound to interpret how an object moves and how far the object is away from, from you. 
When an enemy submarine is trying to hide, it goes into stealth mode, silent running. Making no noise, it is invisible to a pursuing sub. To locate it, the hunting crew must throw out a sound and listen for where the echo comes from. Just like Ben when he clicks, they are actively searching out an object with a sound. When it bounces off a metallic object, it, it does make a sound like a bell ring. So you'll hear the ping going out and a ping coming back towards you. And once you hear that sound, you know that there is an object out there that, that you need to investigate further. Sonar operators undergo extensive training to interpret the echoes, to discern distance, direction, size and shape. Remarkably, Ben has trained his brain to do the same, without the help of a submarine's multi-million dollar technology. In water, even a small noise can be heard for many miles. In air, echoes are much harder to pick up. They're so faint, it's a miracle Ben can echolocate at all. South of Sacramento, between the mountains and the Pacific Ocean, is the University of California, Santa Barbara. Scientists here want to study how Ben sees and navigates with such a faint signal. Nicholas. This is Ben. Nice to meet you. Psychologist Dr. Nicholas Giudici has been blind from birth. <laughs> and geographer Dr. Jim Marston is partially sighted. Professor of psychology Jack Loomis is the odd man out. He can see. Their research combines psychology and geography to help develop practical mobility aids for the visually impaired. They've invited many blind people to help them over the years, but never anyone who echolocates like Ben. One really impressed me was when he walked along that curved path. And he wasn't always right in the center, but he did extraordinarily well. And we didn't even tell him to try to stay in the center. We just told him to walk. We didn't... You know that it was a curve. Right. You did exactly perfectly. Dr. Digici wants to find out whether he can locate a tree by clicking. Do a click. Is that too high? No, I'm trying to find another one. Right click, man? No. My clicking is, uh, is definitely the click of an amateur. I've, I haven't ever done echolocation, so you can hear my clicks and Ben's clicks. They're, they're really quite different. Ben's laughing. I mean, mine are kind of a much less of a full spectrum click. In the human behavior lab, the tests begin. Exactly how clearly can Ben see with echolocation? First, the team ask him to measure some simple objects. Can you tell us how big it is without touching it? About this high. Next, the researchers investigate whether the faint echoes are enough to build a clear mental picture. Hit one of the things. Which two objects are the same? Seeing with light, it's easy, but the tests are proving it's not so straightforward to see with sound. I don't know, this one, I don't know. Yeah? Oh. All right, good start. What's this? You are terrific. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, good job. Can Ben go one step further and identify the next thing he finds? What's that? <laughs> You're pointing to it, right? Yes. Do you know what it is? No, I don't know what... <laughs> no. I know I smell something. Just like submarine sonar, Ben's clicks can detect an object but not see what it is out of context. The team press on, pushing Ben to the outer limits of his ability. The rod is a very small target to find, and it's also curved. The curved surface of the rod scatters the click. There is hardly any echo returning to Ben's ears. The audio signal is very weak. 
can Ben see it at all? It is little. But just, just no. take your best guess as to where you think it is. Just point at it. Touch it. Is it right over there somewhere? Uh-huh, touch it. Touch it? I don't know where you're talking about. That is very, very little. And we didn't know how big an object uh, you could sense or how small an object. I sensed and this, it. This I is heard very, it. I just didn't know what... But we, we were, that's the biggest one we were going to try. And then we were going to try some really small ones. And this is pretty much at the limit.